Welcome to your caddy bag project. So in this series of videos, I will be showing you how to put together a caddy bag, um, which will look something like this. Um, it is a smallish tote bag. It's got lots of pockets for you to put all of your sewing supplies in. Um, so that is mostly what the goal of this project is, is making a fun little bag to carry all of your sewing implements. Um, so to start out with, there are some things you're going to need. Uh, you will need two yards of some thicker fabric, which I will provide for you, as well as a yard of interfacing. Um, and then here are all the pattern pieces you need. So there are a total of eight pattern pieces, um, and I'll talk you through them real quick. This is the front and back piece, and so you've got both your front and back are the same shape, but you also need two out of fashion fabric, two out of lining. I will be using the same fabric, most likely for the inside and outside of my bag. And that is generally what I would suggest for this project for all of you. Um, and then there is the pocket, which goes here. And then another pocket, which goes there. Um, and piece number four is the sides. Um, side pocket, upper side pocket. There's so many pockets in this thing. We're going to really go on a pocket journey together. And I'm so excited for us. Um, this one is the bottom of the bag and then our straps. And so all of these you'll need to cut multiples of. It is specified on these labels of the pieces. And I'm gonna talk you through those real quick because if you're watching this video, you won't watch the other one where I talk through how to read a pattern most likely. So how to read a pattern piece for theater and specifically for patterns that have been hand drafted. Um, so patterns that look like this that are not commercial patterns. There's a lot of information on this little piece of paper that is useful to you. Um, and I'm going to start with the label, which is really rich in information. First of all, there is a number that is just to help you say like, oh, I've only got pieces one through six. I need seven and eight in the fact that there's eight pieces in this project. Um, then there is a label that says it's the caddy project for the advanced lab, which is you. Um, and it tells you what this piece is. Now, I always, especially on a project where all your pattern pieces are rectangles, I would write something like this information in the seam allowance. So while I wouldn't write out front and back pocket, I would make a little note that says like, oh yeah, this is the pocket. Um, and then maybe uh, in parentheses F slash B. Something, something so that I can look at this rectangle and immediately say, oh, this is that rectangle, not this similar but different one. Um, next, there is the label information that says how many you need to cut. And I'm actually gonna switch to this one real quick so you can see. Uh, it will tell you how many you need out of each fabric. Uh, so if you're using a different fabric for your fashion fabric and then your lining, so inside and outside, you need two out of each. Even if you're not, you still need a total of four. So regardless of what fabric you're using, you need four of these. Um, and then back to this one, NSA, you'll notice that's on all of them. Um, that stands for no seam allowance. And what that means is this rectangle does not have seam allowance built in. Um, around the edge, there's a little note that says plus five eighths. Sometimes it'll say plus one. Um, that is your seam allowance. So that means you need to add that in yourself. We can go over how to do that in the next short bit of this video, but just be aware that this is the amount of seam allowance you need to add. And it is present on all of the pieces on all of its sides. Um, if there is a piece that needs to be placed on the fold, which there is not in this project, it would be uh, a little rectangly type thing with arrows pointing and saying place on fold so that would be pretty obvious um other information on this this is the grain line marker this needs to be parallel to your selvage edge at all times otherwise your fabric will be not cut on grain and that will make your bag really weak and sad um and it's important in all sewing projects to keep track of where your grain line is in order for things to be the strongest possible and last a long time and lastly, on almost all of these, um, not every piece, but most of them, there is a stitch line marked. Uh, this is because there's a lot of things that need to be placed. And so we will want to mark these little notches um, on your pattern when you're tracing it. And then you'll use that to draw the line onto your pattern piece and then hand based stitch it. Hand trace it, sorry. Um, so that is what all of the information on these pattern pieces is for, oh, the, the notches that are all over the place, these are to help you align the pieces. So you'll notice if you've got two pieces that go together, their notches should line up. And so those two have matching notches. This one is for placement, so this one does not have that notch. Um, 
And that is all of the pattern pieces. So for step one of this, before you do anything with your fabric, you do need to grab some brown tracing paper and make copies of all of these bag pattern pieces for yourself. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, it means that you've got an infinite bag hack because you could make a theoretically limitless number of bags from your little bag pattern that you make a copy of. And two, it's because we've got one of these patterns and there's more than one of you in the class, so we need to be able to have you all work on them at the same time. And then also three, if a million people use these bag patterns, they will just crumble and fall apart. You'll notice they've already got like a lot of puncture wounds in them. Um, and so this is us trying to preserve the life of this caddy bag pattern. So that is your pattern tour for the caddy bag project. Um, and now I'm gonna take us into cutting some fabric. Now that we've gone through all of our pattern pieces, we can start cutting out the fabric. And this video is not going to take you through the entire process of me cutting out this bag because I don't think that will be useful to you. I'm just going to walk through some quick tips and tricks, show you how to do one piece, and then we're going to be trucking because I don't think that anybody really wants to watch an hour of me cutting out fabric. Uh, so, like I said, you need all of your pattern pieces for this step. Other things you need is you need your fabric, you need some of the push pins, these really, uh, like, knifey type ones, and an 18 inch ruler and a marking tool that will show up on your fabric. For mine, I'm just using pencil uh, because it's a lightly colored textile. And before starting, I went ahead and pinned my fabric to the table wrong side down, or sorry, right side down, wrong side up, um, because I'm going to be drawing lines and I want them all to be on the back. So now let's get started with our bag. I'm going to start out doing a piece that's got the most like stuff on it so that I can show you all of the all of the things that go along with doing this, and then we can call it a day as far as this video goes. So I'm starting with the front and bag, front and back piece for our bag. Um, and step one for doing fabric cutting is uh, you always want to line up the grain line. And before starting, I did go ahead and press my fabric, get all that jazz. I figure you all are strong, capable individuals who can do that without me showing you a video of me ironing fabric. Okay, so to line up my grain line, I am placing the edge of my ruler down here. I and mean, I'm actually gonna zoom in for you. Um, I'm placing the edge of my ruler on the bottom of my fabric. And then I am rotating this pattern piece until the marked grain line on it is lining up completely with one of these lines. So essentially I'm just making sure that everything is parallel um, because that is how we keep things good and consistent. Now you'll also notice on my fabric, it's got stripes and the stripes line up with the selvage edge, which is really super convenient because that means I can go like, oh, I got that lined up there. Now we're good. I know we're good because it is lined up with the stripe itself. So now I'm going to go ahead and place some pins in this bad boy. Yeah, I'm probably going to zoom out the video again in one second so that you guys can see better. So I've got pins in all four of my corners. Um, I don't feel any need to like put a whole bunch of bonus pins in on this piece specifically. If I was doing something massive with a lot of strange shapes, I would do more than just four corners. But this, this is a little guy and this is to keep it from, from moving around and it's doing that. It's not moving around when I touch it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and trace my pattern piece and I'm doing this carefully because the line that I'm tracing right now will become my stitch line. Um, so it's important that it is steady, it is connected, it's not like really sketchy or wiggly or you want it to be consistent and across the board there. And when I reach each of these little divots, I'm going to mark a little line sticking out from them. This is how I prefer to mark the notches because I think it's, it's easier to see them. And then I'm just going to repeat this process on all of the sides. Um, and taking care with making sure that the notches are marked. Those are they're easy to forget. Um, and realistically, if I was doing this not for a video, I would lay out all of my pieces to begin with, uh, planning ahead for ones that I need duplicates of, which I think is all of them because it's a square. Um, but I would go ahead and I would plan out where the things are going to be placed, and that's what I would recommend you do. Um, 
since I'm only doing one in this video, and I've also got like an ample amount of fabric, um, I am not doing that right now, but like I said, that's what I would recommend for you. So once I've got this traced all the way around the outside with its little divots, now it's time to add the seam allowance, um, which is really important because if you forget to do it, your bag will be like comically undersized and you'll never fit anything in it that's cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm looking at my pattern. It says five eighths of an inch seam allowance, which is standard. That's industry standard. That is commercial pattern standard. If it's going to be different, it will tell you, but generally it's five eighths. Um, and so I'm going to look at my ruler and say, okay, half of an inch. And then this line right here is five eighths. It's uh, between three quarters and a half inch um, is how much seam allowance you want. So then I just place my ruler with the edge lined up on the edge of the pattern piece and I'm going to mark a dashed line all the way around the outside of my piece. And now this one I'm not, I'm not taking it and I'm not going to make like a super connected uh, solid line. You can do that. I find it is unnecessarily time consuming because this is the line I'm going to cut on and I can just follow the dashes uh, successfully without worrying about like oh no there was an inch between there was an inch between my my dash and this dash and I got totally went off roading like I'm, I'm gonna be able to my scissors will be able to show me the way um, and so I'm just going around if you've got trouble seeing where five eighths is consistently um, you can use your pencil and mark a little line on it. They will rub right off of this ruler when you are done. Um, so if you're, if you're like, man, I have to keep counting to five eighths, which is really obnoxious, just go for that. It's easier. Okay, and I'm gonna say we're good. So. This is how, here at the Kent State Costume Shop and in every professional costume shop I have worked in, patterns are cut. Um, this is how they're transferred and cut because you get this nice stitch line, you get your seam allowance built in easily, and you're really confidently getting things consistent with grain line and with placement on your fabric. So that is all for this video. Um, oh wait, here, I'll show you this. And then that will be all for this video. With pieces with lines like this, um, I'm just going to scooch that bad boy to the side and I look at this and say, oh, oops, I scooched it right off camera. Okay. I look at this and say, oh, these two have lines. This one doesn't. Um, so we're going to ignore, we're going to ignore this pair of dashes, but the two that have lines, I'm going to draw a line connecting them. Um, I'm going to do this pretty lightly. That was too light. No one's ever going to see that. And this will be the line that we will hand thread trace in the future, in a future video. Um, because it will show us our pocket placement. But now we've got we've got those two lines marked on our fabric. Um, and like I said, I'm going to write this is a front. So I'm just writing front in the seam allowance. No one will ever see it but me, but it will help me when I've got a pile of, of uh, quadrilateral pieces to sort through and say, ah, yes, this is the one I want. Um, so basically that's it. Um, you're just going to go through and make sure you've got enough of each of these. Um, so for this one, I actually need four. I need two for the outside, two for the inside. And since I'm using this fabric for all of them, I will just do it four times on this fabric. And that is the case for all of my pieces of just follow what it says. If I'm gonna cut two, I cut two. If it says cut two of uh, one thing, two of another thing, cut them all out of the same fabric unless you're using it a different lining. Um, and those are all of my handy dandy fabric cutting tips. Good luck.